Okay, so for those of you who might have caught my short earlier, uh, here's that knife. It's all finished. This is a buck 110. It's all polished up, resharpened. Got a nice new edge on there. It is super sharp and ready to go back. But let's do the other one, and this is going to be the longer video where I'm going to show you kind of everything, and I'm going to show you um, one other cool thing that I like to do these that I... Uh, forgot to mention on the other one. So let's get started. So the first thing I always look at is how dirty is it on the inside? And many times if it's a pocket knife and it's really filthy and sometimes you'll get some really bad ones, I will put it in a sonic cleaner. Now this one doesn't need it, so we're not going to bother with that, but I just figured I'd mention that. Uh, you know, especially if you're dealing with uh, rust and that kind of stuff, a sonic cleaner uh, can be very helpful uh, if you need to get a lot of junk out of the inside of your knife. Uh, but we're going to go on no sonic cleaning this time. We're going to just go uh, right to polishing and cleaning. So the first thing I like to do is clean these inside grooves as much as I can get in there. And a lot of times what I like to do is use one of the smaller uh, Dededco brushes and literally get in here on a slight angle and just start cleaning off all that brass. Now, the other thing I'll do, if you have a knife that's a lot deeper that this isn't gonna reach, on my longer, three inch buffs on the jewelry buffers, I've always kept aside one single radial disc that's long and thin. So I have my huge stack of them all together, but then I keep a single one, which will reach all the way down in here if I need to. Now these aren't, like I said, this one's not that dirty. So it's not a big deal. Um, and I'm able to get the sides here just by kind of going on an angle. But sometimes you have rust and all kinds of junk down in there where really a much longer uh, disc is helpful. And I'll just show you quickly. I have a whole little set that I keep separate. So these are my three inch big ones that go on my jewelry buff, but you'll see it's just one single one and I can get all the way inside there uh, with these if necessary. This one doesn't need it, but I just thought I'd show you that because uh, it's a great way to get in here uh, if you need to get way to the back. Uh, those, those three inch ones are very helpful. All right, so now I'm gonna move over to my 3 inch 220. This is my 3 inch 220. And he wanted the wood redone on these. So I am going to hit everything with this, including the wood. And then I'm going to refinish the wood. Now, another thing, I try not to buff the wood down into the brass because a lot of times the muck from this will get, will get on the brass. And the same, the opposite way too. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So this one... It's probably a little less old than the other one, or was just less used. The other one had a lot of, as I showed you earlier, a brown uh, oxidation in there. But this one, yeah, this one looks to me like it was not used as much. So now I'm going to get in here with the smaller handheld radial disc and get all that edge in there and that tarnish out of there and that looks good and you'll see this doesn't take long and it's nice with these small ones you can kind of go 
and get in those little tough areas that you want to hit. You know, I don't want to spend too much on the wood. I'm going to hit the wood, but I don't want to. I don't want to get in there too much with it. So that looks good. That looks good. So now I got to do all up in here. So I'm going to close it. I'm going to go back to my regular radial buff. And hopefully you guys can see on video I mean, how quick that takes. Because it's pretty fast. It does a really nice job of cleaning these up and it's relatively quick. And the other thing which is great about it is it's really safe. It's, these radial discs, when you're polishing, are just really awesome for not damaging things. So now I'm going to start doing the wood. I'm going to grab me a little rag here. Just do a little bit of wipe down. Now here's another thing I'll show you guys, uh, goof off. A lot of times when you get pocket knives and things in, they're covered with glue. And so if I see something's real dirty and glued up, if it's been opened lots of packages and stuff, I have goof off, I have two of them. I have an industrial strength stuff of uh, goof off that I like, uh, which is also really good. Right now, what I'm spraying on here, this is just 100% isopropic alcohol or I think it's I'm sorry it's 99 percent it's not a hundred percent and this is just to start getting some of this oxidation and and uh, tarnish of the brass off and I like to use uh, I use white rags in the shop just because it's uh, helps you see what, what you're getting off and what it looks like and gives you an idea what it is all right so that's the 220 right there. Now we haven't even touched the blade, but we will. Uh, this blade looks pretty good. Uh, definitely is dull. Um, but like I said, this one looks like it was not nearly used as much as that other one. And actually the wood looks, looks quite good on this one. So that's another reason I don't want to touch it too much. I just want to repolish it up. So I don't even think I'm going to touch, I'm not going to touch this wood with the 220. I'm going to go right to my uh, 400 for continuing polishing here. I do want to hit the edge in here of this knife. Um, I do see some marks in there and some scratches. So I am going to start working the blade a little bit here. Just because it's in such good shape. I'm just going to knock that out now. Yeah, that looks good. I'm going to do the other side too. And I always do, at least I try to, sometimes, sometimes I forget and go out of order, but most of the time, I do all appearance, polishing, all that kind of work. I like to do that first. And I sharpen last. Because you could dull your knife, you know, if you're not careful with polishing. It's possible to do a little dulling of, of a really sharp blade that you brought back really nice. So I try not to... I try not to do any of that after the fact. I like to do. I think, I mean, look at, you can see how nice. This is already looking really great. So I'm just working on any little areas or lines or little tiny scratches I see, but in general, this one, this one was le is going to be less work than that other one. That other one, even though you just used it on a short video, it, it took me about 45 minutes 
to do the full process on that. Okay. Okay, so now I'm moving on to the 400. And then I will do a little bit of the uh, one micron on here. And this is where, this is where you're really starting to polish. So 220 is not really polishing. It is, it is, uh, removes a li little more than what the, you know, higher grits do. So as you start getting a 400 and above, you're really, in my opinion, polishing everything. Uh, at 220, you are removing stuff, you know, uh, and that's the difference you'll see in these radial discs. So anything below 220, it's, even though it's still really gentle and removing stuff, it is removing stuff. So that's great for like, if I really wanted to strip a ton of this old uh, finish off of there, you know, I would do that at a lower grid or if I have a knife with a lot more scratches in it I might start with an 80 disc uh, 80 grit uh, radial disc but as you see we start getting into these 400 and uh, we have uh, the progression there is um, 400 and then we have a 3 micron and a 1 micron are the uh, ones in the Dededco lineup you're really you'll see how just beautifully shiny things start to come at 400 and you can really you can even stop um you can stop at 400 um if you want it for sure uh it's a very nice beautiful shiny finish and i'll show you what that looks like and then the 1400 is just really you know really 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 starts to make stuff shine and sometimes if I see a little bit of dirt starting to show up, sometimes you'll see your radial just putting a little dirt uh, back on things. What I'll do sometimes is take a rag and a little cleaner. So this is a little Lysol surface cleaner. I use that a lot in my shop. I'll sometimes just see all that muck that came off of there. A lot of that is from that oxidation of that brass. And what I'll do is hit this a few times like this to clean some of that off. And you can run these things to you can use them wet. I think I've showed that plenty of times. You can see that's pretty much coming off of there now. Yeah, and that's looking a lot cleaner. And I'm gonna touch some of these others because I use them for the uh, the other knife that was heavily oxidized. So if you start seeing some of that oxidation come back on, you might just want to clean your radial disc a tiny bit there. All right, so let's get back here. Now, here's another trick. A lot of times when I have done the brass and I want to touch the wood the wood will dirty the brass and the brass will dirty the wood kind of works both both ways so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just take a piece of painters tape because if I have my brass looking pretty nice I'm gonna just go over it with just a piece of little painters tape there just to keep any of that stuff from really getting all over the brass again uh, it's not a big deal but it just uh, it does help and you'll see that's pretty quickly stripping off some of that old outside layer you'll see the woods getting a little lighter brown but it's not like I said this is not super aggressive. This is not like I'm taking 
sandpaper to it, which would be really, really aggressive. At this point, these are polishing. These are polishing discs. Now I'm just going to clean off. stuff. And then I'm going to polish the wood with a wood polish. But I do like to, like I said, protect the brass a little bit just because otherwise you go back to dirtying this up and then the other one dirties the other one up. And I just find this works pretty good and it only takes a little bit of little second or two to put a little piece of tape on there. So it's just something I like to do. You can work without it. But you know if you start seeing like I said the the brass dirty in the wood or vice versa, the wood if it hasn't been uh if it's got a lot of old finish and sometimes those old finishes get a little sticky you might see that residue going on to the uh, the brass there. I'm just trying to make sure I'm hitting all that wood. Okay, so it looks a lot smoother. You'll see there a uh, little flat because we did uh, remove some of the that old finish. Most of that off. I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'm going to go and I'll show you how I polish the wood. So this is a, a plastic and wood polish that I like. I have another one, big, this big bar over here. It's a plastic and wood polish. I'm going to start with the pink one first. Uh, I like that uh, for starters, and then I like to finish with the more uh, yellow. It's not even really yellow, it's more of a cream colored one. Right now, that's just a rake I'm using there to clean off any old polish. So this is the, the pink one. This one comes from Combat Abrasives. It'll probably last me the rest of my life if you've seen the size of that bar. Organic. So, a lot of times I will open the knife when I'm doing the wood. Gives me something to hold it with. And can you see how nice that wood's polishing up? You can go both directions. But try and finish with your grain. And it's not going to hurt your metal if you get it on the metal. It will. It's it's a really high uh, grit polish, so it 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 will actually. And I'll I'll just show you here what will happen. It'll actually shine it up really beautifully. But you will sometimes start to get a little black on your, see the buff turning black? But you can really make those look great. But that black coming off of there. Is just from the metal polish, you know, polishing the metal, especially when you polish brass, it's kind of always turns black and you just simply wipe it off. Gonna add some oh let's go back to the pink. Do the other side.
that's starting to get a nice shine. Reshining the old brass rivets that are on there. Getting that edge. So you will start to see a little build up where the metal and the brass meet. Just get in there with a rag, wipe it off. All right, so I'm just more wiping and checking the overall general appearance of everything I'm seeing here. All right, and I'm I'm liking my wood. I'm happy with how that buffed out. If it had looked dry or like it was really worn, I would probably strip it down and hit it with like a linseed oil first and let that dry for a few days. Uh, but this this one just it, it's in really good shape, so there's no need for that. But that's a that's another thing you can do if you're dealing with handles that are have really had some time on them and or if the wood's really dried out. I think you can see here, this is looking quite nice. So we're getting there. All right, so now I'm going to do a final polishing of the brass on my one micron, which is 14,000 grit. And this is where it really starts to get a semi-mirror finish to it. And I'll show you, I just accidentally touched the, the wood. Can you see what it did? So I'm going to have to repolish that. So I'm going to go right back over to my, my wood polisher. So I fixed that by just touching it on the wood polisher. But this is where I said before, it's, it's not a bad idea to use some tape. So now that I have the wood looking the way I wanted to, what I should have done, as I mentioned earlier, is put a little tape there. And then that way, I don't have to worry about hitting the wood and removing that polished finish. All right. So I am done with the polishing of this knife. Well, we still didn't really do the blade, but honestly, I don't think the blade needs, I did a little bit, right? Yeah, it doesn't need much. Yes, there's a couple marks right here in the middle. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a little tiny area there or something went across this blade and right in here in the fingernail groove for opening the uh, knife could use a little work so what I like to do with those I like to get in that groove with a small one I'm not worried about it's gonna go against the the knife it's almost gonna look like it's scratching it but what I'm doing is just cleaning that out and then I'm going to fix that hole what I just went across because the gray pattern is going up and down and I had to get in there and you can see it put a little mark there but it's not a big deal because I'm going to go you can see I got that all cleaned out it's nice and shiny and now I'm going to I'm going to go back to my 220 and repolish it. I didn't see those couple of scratches before. I just want to get them out. You see, I got that all cleaned out in the middle, and I see a tiny little bit right there. I'm gonna hit it a little bit more. Yeah, that looks perfect. Now I hit the back side. I 
jump back to my 400. I know when I talk to a lot of other fellow sharpeners out there, you know, like sharpening is for some of it's a really relaxing just thing to do. And for me, that's kind of how polishing knives is. I just love polishing knives and taking something that is like just looked awful when it came in and then, you know, and turning it into this. And look at that just just gorgeous um, and there's something really satisfying about doing that and I'm angling my clamp from my tip to the end here if there was an imaginary line going through there I'm trying to get that angle as close as possible because that gives you the most even bevel on a curved knife and clamping that in there good so, since the last buck knife, last knife I did was the other buck knife, this should be probably pretty close. It's actually, this one's a tiny bit steeper. So I'm going to raise this up a little bit. All right, here. All right. very important that you are lifting and not turning the edge of the knife be careful not to angle like this way you want to be lifting or you're gonna grind out way too big of a bevel on the front of a buck knife okay so I like to follow as straight a line as I can, and then when I get to my curve, I like to pull up, just like that. And this is, like I said, this is a fairly aggressive stone, and you'll see I'm, I am slowly getting a very nice bevel. Got in there, we still need to hit a little bit there in the middle. And we also still haven't raised a burr, so there's a good bit to go there. But I like to check, especially when it's a refurbishing, that I have the bevel that I want. That I'm not grinding uh, too much away, that it's not in the wrong spot, that it's cutting a really nice pretty new edge into that knife. Tip needs a little work. So when you're working on a CBN wheel, which you can grind dry, you can see I'm starting to get a little metal build up there it doesn't hurt to just wipe it down so you're not getting that blocking your vision of what's going on there so I just that's all I was doing is just giving that a wipe down and I can see the burr is raised in the back same thing on this side the belly that little back like half an inch Still isn't quite there yet, and the tip's not there yet, but we're getting there. Yeah, and that's and that's sharp too. <laughs> this is 200 grit, uh, and like I say all the time in my other videos, you shouldn't be going up in grit unless it's cutting at that level. See, we are cutting just fine so we can go up to our thousand grit now I'm gonna go
ahead and switch to my other wheel. And here we go with our 1000 grit CBN wheel. And this will really start to put an edge on here like we're all used to seeing on buck knives. Now I am going to use the Tormac wheel because it has some uh, Tormac paste on there. There, um, but this will start to give it a really nice mirror finish, and of course, remove the burr. And buck knives are are super easy to sharpen. They're a great metal. But they're also nice, they're soft, they're nice soft metal, so they're easy to sharpen. And, and to put a beautiful edge on them, they get crazy sharp. I have the, the very first knife I ever bought, I think I was 14 years old, is a Buck Knife 110, and I still have it. <laughs> I think I've shown it in other videos before. And before I really knew how to, learned how to sharpen, it was one of those knives I... I butchered as a kid <laughs> trying to sharpen and uh, but you know I think we all go through that when we're a kid trying to sharpen something we get our first knife and we're like ah I'm gonna sharpen it and uh, not uncommon that we uh, mess them up even for adults <laughs> I wouldn't have I wouldn't do what I do if it wasn't for people Messing up the edge of knives a lot. So let's take a look here. You can see it's getting starting to get nice and shiny. Leather hone. So I'll bring you over there. And this here should really finish this off beautifully and make it pretty much razor sharp. And finish and even add to that mirrored edge look. Now I treat my leather wheel usually with diamond spray that I make myself from lapis tree diamonds and alcohol, but I have also used Tormek paste on it, which works great, uh, and um, I've tried gunny juice and lots of those other uh, products and things out there. I just like to make my own diamond spray because it's far more affordable. I do not like rouges that you use like these stick rouges. I like them for polishing wood. I like them for polishing plastic. I do not. And I think you can see we have a very sharp buck knife here. Factor razor sharpness. There it is. Fully refurbished. Fully polished. The only thing left to do now is lubricate it. So I'll do that. And I'm going to show you my one other secret weapon real quick. Let me go grab it and show you what that is. So another thing that I like to use on knives, especially pieces that mean something to somebody, whether it be it, that it belonged to someone or old military pieces that are more of a show thing, is this stuff right here. It's called Renaissance Wax. And Renaissance Wax is really amazing stuff, but it will really protect your knives. It's also great. You can use it on firearms. And this is used by museums. In fact, it's endorsed, I think, yeah, 
Renaissance wax blended to a formula used by the British Museum of Restoration Specialists. So this stuff's no joke. And it really does a nice job of keeping things uh, looking great for a long time. And I always tell people, especially if they have like a show piece that, you know, they're getting redone and they want to keep it um, looking great. This is some great stuff to use on it. And you'll see it's a white wax. Now, I warn you, it's a little potent uh, when you first get it out. It's, it's a micro, what they call a micro uh, crystalline wax. So it like fills in microscopic little particles. It polishes up really nice. And it will keep this knife looking great for quite some time. And you can use it all over. It's safe for wood. It's safe for metal. It's safe for leather. So if you can even use it on sheaths. And you just kind of put it on the whole thing. And let it dry, and it, like I said, it, when it, when I said it's potent, you will smell it when you open the can. Uh, there's a lot of uh, something in there, I guess, to make it uh, evaporate. I don't know exactly what the ingredients are, um, but it goes away pretty fast. And it actually, I actually like the smell <laughs> of it. But so I will put this on the whole knife, and then start buffing it out. Uh, usually with a microfiber cloth. And it's great for uh, keeping fingerprints down and protection from fingerprints. And look, look what it's even still removing stuff. So you can see it's really, it's, it's neat stuff. Yeah, this uh, Renaissance wax. So, but this is what I like to use that... Well, I never told any, I don't think I've ever put it in any of my videos. It's kind of a secret weapon that I have that I share with uh, with those of you out there that are looking to start a sharpening business. So now you know one of my one of my secrets. It's it's Renaissance wax. But yeah, so and you can you can if you want to, you can buff it with a with a regular buffer. Uh, I usually do it just by hand at this point, especially if it's already sharpened. I don't like to go back. I don't like to go back to the buffer um, when something's been sharpened already. I do see a tiny bit of uh, sharpie here that didn't come off. So I'm hitting this with a with some isopropic alcohol. Yeah, I just want to make sure I have all that sharpie off that blade. And now, I'm just going to hit it again with the Renaissance Wax. Because I'm not looking to seal that Sharpie in there. But there's, the, there's the Renaissance Wax. Yeah, I actually became aware of Renaissance Wax from my photography work. I do, uh, as I mentioned before, I do a lot of alternative photography, which is really old style photography which is you know similar to like 1800 style uh, photography and some of the uh, prints you need to seal the prints and you can use renaissance wax for that so like I said it's used heavily by the uh, museum uh, the British museums uh, for restoring things they yeah they even use it for restoring paintings and all kinds of stuff all right, so that is done. Look at that. I mean, it's just beautiful. And the last thing I'm going to do is I am going to... He actually sent both of the buck knife cases. And I will actually... I'm going to clean these up for him. And this is another great thing to use the Renaissance wax on. So you can go all over this leather. You can see it's starting to crack some inside here. Uh, with Renaissance wax, it's not gonna hurt it. It's just gonna just suck it all in and it will give it a nice uh, look again. So a lot of times I'll just get in here and 
and hit someone's sheath for them and rebuff it up before I package it back up and send it, drop it in the mail back to them. Sometimes I like to hit the, the button on the sheath too on the polisher. So I just polish that button up a little and now I'm just touching the rest of this leather up. Now sometimes a little leather cleaner doesn't hurt and I have even used uh, leather dyes if it's something that they someone really wants everything uh, refurbished. They make some great uh, leather dyes and uh, let me show you what those are. They come in like every imaginable color. So they have blacks and they have multiple browns. So if you have to refurbish like a buck knife case and you wanted to correct the leather color, this is the one I've had really good success with. Uh, it's Furniture Clinic Leather Reconditioning Balm. Works on furniture, but also, as you can see, shoes, uh, cars. I've had great success with it on doing uh, leather sheaths. Uh, it's good stuff. And it will last you, if you're only doing sheaths, this is going to last you a really long, long, long time because there's they give you quite a bit in there. All right, so that is the uh, refurbishing of this uh, buck knife and uh, touching up his sheath a little bit and that'll be put in here and packed up and sent back. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Have a great day.